Hi folks, Dan the Wolfman here. Today's video is caliber to capacity ratio, primary carry versus pocket work bug backup gun carry. So guys, if you really want to understand ballistics, please look at my 9mm versus 45 four part series and my 380 and under pocket pistol calibers suck. Look at it. I give you more data than anybody else because clear gel is absolutely not real gel. I'll give you real gel, ballistics data, real FBI data, real street data to learn about ballistics. Now, if you are a new shooter, 9mm really is a great cartridge because it really works pretty well in under three, three and a half inch barrel or longer barrels or even two inch revolver barrels. It works pretty darn good and in a three inch barrel automatics with proper load, load choice being an HST, it's good. And in three and a half inch barrels or longers, a 124 plus P, nine millimeter, one of the better loadings, gold dot, HST, a golden saber 124 plus p works really really good so we're going to talk primary carry but we're also going to talk pocket backup gun uh etc what is the caliber that kind of capacity ratio and uh let's give you some statistics as well a lot of youtubers and a lot of older data is yes a defensive display is usually enough and if not three to five shots usually send the two muggers running yeah, but I don't want to prepare for best case scenario that it's an undetermined attacker, okay? If it comes down to actually deadly force, to having to shoot, I want to know that if I do my part, and with a pistol big enough-ish that I can do my part and make accurate hits, that if I do my part, that the bullet is going to do its part. Because... Hitting someone in the head, not here, but in the actual T-box brain pan area, hitting someone luckily in the central nervous system, that really is luck. Okay, skill comes into play, but in real shootings, when stats for years tell us only 20% of rounds fired are hits, when huge uh, NYPD data, a huge department, only one point six out of every eight shots mean average fired eight shots only 1.6 are hits that tells me to stop a deadly force when real data tells us you need over two shots of a pistol to stop someone it's usually at least three and oftentimes there's still a deadly threat on the ground shooting at you or dropping to a knee with a knife and getting back up trying to stab you you're probably going to need three hits you need to take some statistics into you know consideration here people punching paper are like well with my two second splits i can hit the body <laughs> they're not necessarily here they're here they're here they're running they're moving you got to realize that all pistols suck compared to rifles or shotguns you need to understand this but all pistol calibers do not suck equally nine millimeter and above 380 and under, and 38's kind of in a weird area in between, and really that's with best bullet choice, and really it should be over 2 inches. Actually, all 38 revolvers should be made with 2 and a quarter inch barrel. All 357 should be made with, with a 2 and a quarter inch barrel, not 2 inch or 1 and 7 8 inch. Really, that's, that's what all my dedicated study tells me. But anyway, guys, if you're a better shooter, a 45 or 10 millimeter absolutely does more damage than a 9 millimeter. And a 357 full power load probably is like 1.2 times in real world what a 9 millimeter uh, does. Now, do you want to shoot full power 357 from a lightweight snubby or 340 PD? No, you don't. And even the best shooters all the time that can handle it really the split times. Getting back fast, rapid target acquisition in a real-world setting, it wouldn't be worth it. Okay? So, anyway, guys, also this video is kind of important if, unfortunately, unconstitutional 10-round magazine limits uh, happen. Shouldn't happen. Should never happen. It could happen. Um, and so you want to start kind of thinking in these terms as well. In my opinion, 11 rounds of 45 or 10 millimeter equal your 16 round up 9 millimeters. 
uh, for real defensive shootings. Uh, to go more into statistics, 8 to 11 rounds being fired is, fired is very, very common. Tom Givens instructors, many of them have been in real defensive gun use. 8 to 11 rounds fired is very, very common. An act of self-protection, uh, just saw 13 shots, most likely in 9mm in Brazil. And then a reload, and a lot of times reloads happen, uh, even if you don't need it, you need it in case they come back. You need it to assess if they're down and not coming back or not shooting at you from the ground. You need it um, to affect arrest. Uh, even uh, like a very famous gunfighter, uh, Chicago PD, often was, I think it rounds from a SIG full size 45, and then, you know, reload and to see which ones are not dead right there to make sure they're not a deadly threat and to affect arrest on any that haven't expired. Uh, Jim Cirillo, six shots from Model 10, 38. 38 kind of sucks, but four inch barrel, it doesn't necessarily suck from it. And then six shots from a two inch uh, detective. Went through that often. I don't know if he ever went back to, went to his 32 backup. Let me know in the comments if you're aware if he had to go to his New Jersey reload. But definitely six and six was pretty common, okay? I believe with Jim Cirillo's and the New York uh, stakeout squads. Um, shootings. Um, so guys, 11 rounds of 45 or 10 millimeter with the best loads, 45 HST or 185 plus P Golden Saber, 10 millimeter in my opinion. I don't know if it's worth the split time difference 10 millimeter. Guys, I really haven't tested it enough. Uh, but 10 millimeter, 165 grain Underwood Gold Dot does penetration expansion and even in a Glock 29 almost hits the, in my opinion, like a magical 1300 feet per second. That gives you the louder bang and actual damage up front and more nerve sensation lead, more psychological stuff. So 165 Underwood Gold Dot, but certainly 180 Gold Dot, 180 um, Underwood uh, XT, uh, XTPs and uh, 180 um, SIG V-Crowns do phenomenally well in 10 millimeter. Okay, 9 rounds of 45 and 10 round, 10 millimeter uh, and 45s exist, Glock 30, Glock 30, uh, Glock 29s, etc. that could be carried. Nine rounds of 45, a good eight round mag, like a 47D and a 1911 Commander, lightweight Commander, or a CW45. Uh, nine rounds of 45, in my opinion, are greater than 11, nine, 11 rounds in nine millimeter. Nine rounds of 45, to me, I am a more skilled shooter that can handle recoil, uh, very well and my split times are almost just the same as nine millimeter nine rounds of 45 equal about the same of 11 rounds and nine millimeter does it equal most times about the same as 16 to nine millimeter in most times maybe in riot times riot season definitely not okay uh, but uh, nine rounds of 45 greater than 11 rounds of nine millimeter or seven shot a full bore 357 magnum from a 6 to 86 plus GP 100 towards 692 I have videos on this. If you're using federal semi-jacketed hollow point as the first three or four rounds, screaming at 1,400 feet per second, we know the one-shot stops. We know street data. We know real world. That did very good things. But I would take the nine rounds of 45 as a balance over 11 rounds or seven rounds of 357 Magnum. Seven rounds, that definitely means, in my opinion, you got to carry a backup. If you're carrying a revolver, in my opinion, you got. I think you should carry a backup anyway. But if you're carrying a revolver, you need a backup because you're going to fight active self-protection. You're going to fight with what's in the gun usually. Um, and there is, I think, with a Model 10 probably or 64, a 4-inch barreled, there's a video of a security guard and he, two bad guys come in. I think he got two hits on the first guy or one out of the two hits on the first guy. Four body hits on the second guy with a 4-inch barreled 38. And 4 inches, a lot better than 2-inch barreled. Um, and the guy came around the corner and when he was reloading, shot him, I think, in the head and killed him. So capacity does matter. Now let's talk about backup gun or pocket carry, guys. For big boy like me, you don't realize how much you can actually pocket carry. Yes, it is totally possible to carry eight rounds of 45 or 16 rounds of 9 millimeter in a pocket and people don't notice. Of course, these are specific firearms typically, like a CW45 with them with a a seven round act mag or a seven round specific uh, 
uh, mag, uh, old shooting star magazine, or a 9mm like the new Delta. But you could probably even get a P365XL, 13 rounds in your pocket, Hellcat, 14 rounds in your pocket. It is possible, people. It is possible. You don't realize it, and it is, at least in jeans carry. Now, if it's a uh, work environment, slacks, you're a skinny boy, that might be different. But if you're not an idiot wearing skinny jeans, you can get away with a lot more than you think you can. So maybe in that case, eight rounds of 45, 16 rounds, or 13 rounds of nine millimeter, 14 rounds of nine millimeter kind of even out. Now real pocket bug carrier, non-permissive work environment, or backup gun. I say seven or eight rounds of nine millimeter kind of beat everything else out. Seven or eight rounds of nine millimeter in a Car CM9 or a Walther PPS M2. Uh, you know, various magazine lengths, you got to put in certain things to see about mostly the, the grip height, the total height of the pistol to see if it can clear the pocket reliably. That's what matters, guys, on your pocket draws. Uh, I would say that's greater than six rounds of 327 Federal Magnum, like uh, with gold dots, like LCR or SP-101. 327 with gold dots really performs even well from a short barrel, guys. Look at Lucky Gunner's data. Uh, five rounds of nine millimeter, nine millimeter revolver, waste period of 38 revolver, at least with a two inch barrel, in my opinion, like a LCR or a Taurus uh, 905, I would like to get one day. Five rounds of 327 from a two inch barrel, 357 from a two inch barrel or longer, not a 357 with one and seven eighths, even medium power, like a critical duty or gold dot medium power loads. Is it worth it more than a 9mm revolver? I don't really think so, but if it's 2 inches or longer, like a 640, a 605, or SP-101 with a 2 and a quarter inch barrel, now you could shoot some pretty medium hot loads and get really good um, effectiveness without horrible split times if you're a better shooter with good recoil control. That all, any of those options are greater than 5 or 6 rounds of 38 from a 2 inch barrel or less. I'm not a huge 38 fan from a 2-inch barrel or less. Uh, with slightly longer than 2-inch barrel with like Underwood 125 grain, 38s can really do the job. 5 or 6 rounds, most are 5 shot. A 6 round, uh, the Taurus um, 856 or Ultralight might be a very good option to get that 6 round. It's kind of equal to 8 rounds of 380. I have a video 380 and under sucks and ballistically it really does suck. But if it was my primary carry... Kind of a trade-off between eight rounds, most of them come seven, but you can get an extended magazine like an LCP, eight rounds and gun of 380, XTPs or HTPs will sometimes tumble, or maybe 102 grain golden saber, eight rounds of 380, kind of equalish to five rounds of 38. As a backup, maybe the 38 is better if it's really a backup gun, if it's a primary the more ammo on you could have eight and gun and six in the, 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 the pocket holster as a quick reload, you know, depending on what you think your threats are. Kind of equal out. Usually you're going to be using that, two guys coming to rob you, uh, but maybe an active shooter situation or something. Uh, you know, that's really debatable. But certainly even five rounds of nine millimeter beat five rounds of 38, beat eight rounds of 380, kind of. Um, I would say eight rounds of nine millimeter beat all of them. Uh, and 327 Federal Magnum, if you can handle recoil and blast, um, might be a good option. So anything under 380 is shit. I have a video basically explaining that, very detailed. Um, and that's hoping on being lucky that the attacker, attackers are not determined attackers. And magically, you're such a marksman on moving targets, trying to kill you with knives and guns in a running gunfight ducking behind cover that magically you're going to hit a central nervous system shot. Now, if it's 380 or under at close range, hey man, I'll give you my wall, boom, practicing headshots from a draw with it at 0.98 seconds, so under one second, so they can't even respond and dodge out of the way. Yeah, that's probably a good thing, but to have to rely on, I'm going to be lucky enough to only get certain areas or only get a CNS shot. Do you really want to do that? It's hard enough getting hits on moving targets and grappling targets and guys trying to get on top of you and stab you in the real world that I want to know if I do my part that the caliber with proper bullet selection that the bullet will do its part. And that is to cause 
uh, enough tissue crush damage that they will bleed out from diastolic pressure loss, not necessarily bleed out, but drop or sit down and stop doing what they're doing, decide after they took four in the chest that they might go um, and stop trying to kill you for a good enough time that you can effectively gain control of the situation. So guys, what do you feel? Is 945 better than 11 9 millimeter? I certainly think it is. Is 945 better than 16 to 9 millimeter? In most situations, probably in today's kind of crazy world where there might be even not even the two, three attackers that are becoming more and more common, FBI statistics and my own personal experience of common, multiple attackers and all my real world experience, it's very common. And they, I think FBI now says it's one third, it's multiple attackers. So a third of the time, guys. Uh, I always want to be prepared. Honestly, I like at least nine rounds and gun because I figure you're gonna to have to fire three rounds on three targets. And if you got all hits, that's what it would take. And if you didn't get all hits, that's probably what's needed to drive off the attack and get them far away enough that when they're shooting, they're very unlikely to hit you, to drive them off. Even if a lot of times they're shooting backwards while they're getting into the exit vehicle. That's kind of my opinions on it. You really need nine. Hopefully you need 11. You always got Glock 29. You got Glock 30, 30, SF, 30, S. You want to look into um, maybe um, maybe a 1911 Commander uh, with a 10-round Wilson Combat Magazine. That's something I might look at in the future. So you got 11 rounds of 45, especially if magazine limit happened. I plan on making a video of the best 15 carry guns if, unfortunately, a 10-round magazine limit happens. I would obviously do not support that unconstitutional BS. Uh, but you might want to start thinking about these things. And might start just in general, what do you think? People being comfortable with a 5-shot 38... That it will never be me, even when I'm old, I don't think. I would always carry at least a backup. If you're going to carry a revolver, even a seven shot, like I recommend, is a seven, three inch seven shot 357 Magnum, a viable CCW option, my very popular video. Boy, if you think you're going to take the 12 seconds to reload under fire, you're going to fight with what's in the gun. You can, a New York reload is faster, guys. So, if, it, if maybe in the work environment you only carry a five-shot revolver or an LCP, I think as soon as you get to the car in a lockbox, whatever, you should be for the rest of your day, you should be carrying something bigger and better. Don't forget how hard it is to make accurate shots from a little um, pistol, like a little 380, and how much more frequent they are to things like jamming because of slide mass and whatever. So if you get in a scuffle, if his hand brush uh, just happens to brush the slide or you limp wrist from an odd angle, they're much more likely to jam than a decent size 9mm with a 3-inch barrel or greater or a revolver. They just are. Uh, I'm not saying it's nothing. And a lot of times it will serve its purpose, but you're relying on luck. Should you rely on luck and some supernatural skill that most people shoot shitty? <laughs> they suck even on a square, flat range target with no adrenaline. I do moving stuff even at, at the indoor range and jumping jacks and, and scissor jacks and be like to get my heart rate up while I do my advanced 50 round test. Um, which you should uh, look at as well while it's still available on YouTube. Learn my advanced 50 round, learn gunfighting techniques and positions. Really look at the stuff you will really need. Please thumbs up, share, subscribe, guys. Please subscribe, get down there in the comments, let me know what you think. I want a lot of feedback and interaction on this one. Guys, look at my ballistics videos. You really will learn a lot. I hope you are learning here with me and uh, just let me know your thoughts and what you feel comfortable carrying in a work setting versus like when you're out and about going to Walmart. Thank you very much, guys. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Look at my four and a half hour Combat of the Street Jiu-Jitsu DVD on B.